Coming back to the paper, let's have a look at part B. This Igram diagram shows uh, two complex numbers, here's Z and here's W, and they both lie on the circumference of a circle that is centered at the origin. And then you get asked to prove this particular geometric result down here that relates um, the argument to Z, so you can draw that in, uh, and the argument to R W, which you can also draw in, to the argument of Z plus W, which isn't on our diagram yet. Now, I said this before, um, and I promised I wouldn't drone on about it, but I feel like it needs to be restated. Um, because this is such a geometric visual problem, if you tried to solve this solely algebraically, and several people did, trying to you know, do stuff with tan inverse and all that kind of thing, um, you almost never got anywhere. In fact, I think I can say for all of the responses that I read, um, you made very little appreciable progress. So I think it is important, anytime you see a diagram and you get asked to make some kind of argument argument or proof where you need to um, talk about the visual elements and how they re relate to each other geometrically, draw a diagram, draw a big diagram, draw a clear diagram and then use that as your mechanism for communicating your own logic. That was crucial, all the best answers did it and uh, many people suffered for trying not to do it. I know diagrams take a long time to draw but I feel it is time that you cannot like you don't have time not to draw a diagram, which sounds weird, right? But um, without a diagram, you're just feeling around in the dark. I've got two solutions for this to show you. Um, as is often the case with geometric problems, there's more than one path through the question. Uh, and there's even more than the two paths that I saw here, but these are kind of the most uh, obvious ones. The first one is to use a rhombus. Now, uh, I mentioned before on the original diagram in the question, it provides a Z and a W, but Z plus W, which obviously, uh, because arg Z plus W is the left-hand side of the result we're trying to prove, it, it doesn't exist on the diagram, so you need to place it there. And, of course, the more accurate you can make your diagram, which, by the way, it's easier to make an accurate diagram when it's a big diagram, the more accurate you can make it, the more you can see the intrinsic geometry that's going on here. Um, you're creating a rhombus not just a parallelogram because Z, this is uh, the interval that represents that complex number Z, and W, here's the corresponding interval, uh, because they both are radii on the circumference of that circle centered at the origin, that's why you get, and I've, I've labeled these um, OA and OC, they have to be equal to each other because they're radii of a circle. Since those two are equal to each other, you can see to get to Z plus W, I do the Z uh, vector, as it were, I go OA, and then I go uh, AB. That's, that AB is equivalent to adding W on, um, because it's the addition of those two vectors there. So that's why you can see up here, I get this parallelogram, like I always do whenever I add any pair of complex numbers, but it's the special kind of parallelogram where all of your sides are equal, because of those radii that I mentioned earlier. So, um, you can see by the parallelogram law, I've got this parallelogram, I make the argument that I've got radii which gives me the fact that it's a rhombus because all the sides are equal. And the reason why I go towards having a rhombus is because uh, rhombuses, rhombi, however you say that, um, they have particular geometric properties that are useful to me. I might have seen it when I just scrolled by, but have a look over here back on the question. I have to relate this angle here, Z plus W, to half of these other angles here when they're added together. When you're halving an angle, that is another way of saying visually you're slicing it in half, you're bisecting it, right? So that's why you can see here, I have this OB, which I've deliberately used to cut that diagram or that angle rather in half that you can see here because diagonals uh, bisect angles in a rhombus. Um, several people said that diagonals bisect angles in parallelograms, which uh, it's really easy to see. Uh, give a counterexample of this fact. If I were to draw a parallelogram like this, and then draw one of the diagonals like so, you can clearly see there's going to be um, a big part of that corner angle and then there's going to be a little part of that corner angle. So uh, this is no dice, right? You can't just say I'm going to um, always bisect the corner angles with a diagonal. Um, you need to have a rhombus in order to establish that. So that was a minor point that several people mistook. Now what I've got here is um, AOB is half of AOC. So let's have a look at what's going on here. AOB is, I better make this a bit finer so you can read it a bit more clearly like so. Let's get on to the next solution. Here's AOB right in here, and I'm saying that it's half of AOC, which is going um, all the way across here. So you can see there's AOC, and um, 
the orange angle you can see in here is, has been, it's half, it's, it's got either side there because of that diagonal bisection. And the thing about um, that angle there, this purple angle you can see, it, it starts with arg w, but it's not including this teeny tiny little bit in here. See that? It's like arg w, but we've, we've subtracted that red piece there. But that red piece is arg z, because it is the argument from the real axis all the way up until I'm pointing at Z. So that's why uh, this angle here in purple, I might as well highlight that, that is going to be, um, that's AOB, but it is half of arg W take away arg Z, remembering that arg Z is that little red angle that I was subtracting in the first place. Now, that gives me a half, which is very helpful. I'm like, oh good, this is on the right track, but it's not a half of the angle that I actually want. If you go back to the paper, uh, let's sort of, whoopsie daisy, there's my finger. Um, if you have a look, I've got arg z plus arg w, whereas what I've got in my brackets are arg w minus arg z, so clearly I have more work to do. So coming back to my diagram here, um, I haven't related arg of z plus w yet to these other angles, so I can say, where's arg of z plus w? It's this angle in here from, let's choose another color, from the positive real axis all the way up to pointing at z plus w, which you can see up there. So how do I form that angle? Well, you can see it's gonna be this red angle plus that orange angle that I just mentioned, which I already determined is half of arg w take away arg z. So red angle, arg z, plus orange angle, which I just determined, um, I'm going to have, oh, I think I've colored that wrong. That should be orange. Let's fix that, shall we? Sorry, team. Uh, AO, yeah, AOB. AOC was the purple angle. Let's make that a little bit better. That's better, sorry if that's confusing. Okay, so where am I up to? I've got this this part here, this is AOB, like I determined before. So that's that um, angle that I got from bisecting the angle in the corner of the rhombus. And then um, I've got this little tiny angle in here, the red angle, so let's highlight that. There's arg z, so I've added that on, but I've got like terms, right? You can see here, there's some arg z's there and there's an arg z there. So um, they become this when they are simplified, collected together. And you can see, that's pretty much it. I just have to take that factor of a half out and I am home. So you can see there was some clear steps there. I needed to work out what arg of z plus w was, um, but being able to do that is clearly related to arg z and arg w independently. And I use the appropriate geometric properties um, in order to prove that. So, as promised, this is not the only way to solve this question, as is often the case with geometry problems. We've got many different techniques, many different pathways through this question. So, um, the, the solution I'm about to show you is not as neat and succinct as this one, uh, but often the first solution you come up with is not the most efficient path, and that doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means it'll take you a little bit longer. So let's have a look at method two. I call this one angle sums because there's a whole bunch of um, you know, angles I'm gonna add up together. Uh, I'm not using the same geometric properties that I did before in order to solve this. So, how do I begin? I've described, um, I've called this point here, which is represented by the complex number Z. Um, I've called that capital A, um, I've got capital B up here, and then I've also added this C um, such that it goes in the positive real direction, which makes it parallel to the positive real axis. Now the reason why this is handy for me is because it gives me a pair of parallel lines, I've got a transversal here, OA, which gives me co-interior angles on the inside. If you have a look at my first line of working here underneath my um, constructions, OAC, which is, which is in here, I'll just mark that in uh, orange, there's angle OAC, um, that is co-interior to arg z over here. So that means they're supplementary, they add up to pi radians. So uh, you can see that right there. Just rearranging to make OAC the subject, I've got OAC being pi take away arg z. Okay, so that's fine with me. And then I can say, uh, in order to work out the angle on the other side of this AC parallel line, I can say, well this angle BAC, right? Think about what BAC is. It's from A, it's like you're looking up at uh, B from the perspective of A. Now think about what that means for a second, right? If I'm measuring from here up to here, there's a direct way to write the argument from um, from one point to another, right? If I said to you, um, what is the arg of, say, um, uh, Z, what I mean is, that's really the argument 
of z from the origin. That's the origin is your point of reference, right? In the same way, I can say, what is the argument of this point up here, z plus w, but I'm not measuring from the origin. I'm actually measuring from over here, which is z, right? So instead of writing um, z as the, uh, as the first thing, I'm gonna write z plus w, and then instead of writing the origin, zero, as the second piece, I'm gonna write this z, that's where, that's my reference point, okay? So you can see that's what I've written in here, which takes a second to interpret if you think about this, right? Z plus W, that's where I'm measuring to, and Z is where I'm measuring from. So this is a bit of a funny way to write it, um, but what's great about this is it gives us very quickly, because of the algebra in here, the Z's cancel, which just leaves you with arg W. So rather, um, rather indirectly you can see that this is arg w um, and another way of saying that is you've got these two uh, lines here o to w and then uh, z to z plus w because they are parallel um, you've got uh, these two uh, lines here they're gonna give you, as it were, um, sort of like corresponding angles if you wanna think about it that way because I've got arg w also being there. So um, if, you, if you can see where I'm constructing that, um, those two angles, that's another way of seeing why arg w appears all the way over here even though w is over here. Okay, so I've got arg w here, I've got pi minus arg z over here, and what that enables me to find is this angle left in here. Can you see that? Um, it is the final angle left um, in this kind of revolution, and angles at a point um, add up to two pi radians. So you can see that's where I go here, right? Um, OAB plus OAC plus BAC, these are the three angles we just found. OAC was the orange one, OAB was the purple one, and then BAC is this one, oh sorry, I think I got that order wrong. Uh, I think BAC is the purple one. There we go, that's better. And then OAB is this one that I've just drawn in here, which is in red, which I don't know, that's my unknown, okay? So that's the one here that I'm trying to find, and you can see it appears here. I've just done this substitution, there's OAC, and there's BAC, which I just determined uh, on these lines above. So from here, all I need to do is to get everything on the right-hand side except for OAB, because that gives me this inside angle inside this, uh, this triangle up in here. So I've just used the angle sum at a point, it's a revolution, two pi radians, and I'm about to use another angle sum, but this time it's not at a point, it's going to be a triangle. How do I get there? Well, by vector addition, you can see AB, AB here, to get from Z to Z plus W, I'm adding W, right? So that's what tells me that these two sides here can be considered as vectors with the same direction and also the same, important for me, the same magnitude. So they're not just parallel, they're the same length. So these two are equal. Uh, and that means that I've got this uh, isosceles triangle in here, triangle OAB, is isosceles, so therefore, these two corner angles here, and I need a new color, uh, let's use this one here, this angle in here, and this angle in here are my base angles, as it were, um, and so they're going to be equal to each other, as all base angles in isosceles triangles are. So that's why you can see, I say equal angles are opposite equal sides in that triangle. Um, this is a nice way to say base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal, because it's also true, even if you've got an equilateral triangle. Uh, and so now, I'm just going to put all these three angles together from within that triangle, right? AOB, AOB is this one in here, and that's gonna be useful to me because it will get me to arg of z plus w, which is the whole point of this exercise. So AOB and ABO, they're the same. And so you can see I substitute AOB and ABO for double AOB because that's what these two combine into. So let me put it like, where was my color there? Let's choose, oh yeah, I used this green, didn't I? So here's AOB and ABO, and they become double AOB. Um, I already knew what uh, OAB was, it was that angle that I worked out just up here, using the angle sum at a point, uh, and everything here equals pi, because uh, the angles in a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. Um, from here, I just need to uh, make AOB the subject, and this result right here should be familiar because I addressed it in my previous proof, the one that I used um, a rhombus for, because I was bisecting that angle in the corner that you might recall. So at this point, I'm kind of equivalent to my previous solution, and so now I can just say, um, I can add these two angles together, AOB that I just worked out before, and arg z, which is just underneath it. So here's AOB, and here's arg z underneath it. That will give me the angle 
um, up to z plus w, arg of z plus w. So um, this part flows exactly like it did before. The only difference is that I never had to appeal to any properties of a rhombus to be able to prove it this time. Bit longer, but we still got there.